Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Asian Hustle Network podcast. Today, we have a very special guest with us. His name is Drex Lee. Drex Lee is a serial entrepreneur. He is well known for his epic one-shot videos on Instagram and TikTok, where he has amassed over 4.5 million followers in less than one year. From food stamps to gang violence, shootouts, trailer homes, massive debt, to penthouse, to five businesses, to community leader, to losing everything in the pandemic and coming back up again. Drex, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure for me to be here. I'm excited to uh, join you guys for this very special uh, podcast. It's a very honor to have you on the podcast, man. We we witnessed your growth over like the last two, three years, and it's been tremendous, right? And I think a lot of us can say that, man, like you have one of the awesome, best, best and awesome life out there. So let's, let's walk it through it, man. In the intro, Maggie mentioned that, you know, you grew up in a pretty rough neighborhood. Can we kind of touch base on that real quick? Sure. Yeah. I'm from the uh, city of, uh, I'm put, sorry, I'm from the city of Stockton, California. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that, but it's the 10th largest city in California. Uh, it's also the most diverse city in all of America. Uh, statistically. So to say that when you walk around the streets of Stockton, you'll never see uh, two people of the same race walking together. That's how diverse it is. But because of that, uh, we have a lot of minorities, right? We are a spot where a lot of refugees come through um, after war-torn countries and whatnot, trying to escape violence, uh, political violence, anything like that. They kind of, Stockton's like one of the destination spots where they end up. And um, yeah, that means that, you know, we all come from pretty much the bottom as immigrants and, you know, being especially from coming from war-torn countries, they don't really have anywhere to start out, right? So of course, low income, uh, you know, uh, low income or no income, welfare, food stamps, and all stuff like that, kind of getting us through the system growing up. And I think that's the majority of uh, Stockton people. I think most Stockton people can relate. And, um, you know, being around all this, um, I guess I would say turmoil in Stockton is part of daily life, right? And we're all so used to it that we just thought of it as normal, right? So especially for someone like me, when I moved over to San Jose, I'm like, wow, this is like a really safe city. (laughs) Like, um, I don't have to worry about, you know, getting shot at, like, or or stray bullets just flying everywhere, you know, like all the time. I mean, you might get one here and there occasionally, but Stockton is really just like, man, I really just got to watch out. So that's the kind of um, area we, we grew up in. And um, I think just um, coming from Stockton, I think a lot of the Stockton people could relate with me is that because of um, the circumstances that we were uh, presented with, it uh, it didn't give us a lot of opportunities. But the, the the big opportunity that it gave us is the opportunity to hustle even harder, to try to figure out how to um, make make things like better to where uh, I guess normal would be what we see on TV because we don't know much outside of Stockton because surrounding Stockton is all farmland. <laughs> so, you know, but yeah, that, that's kind of like, um, what, what I, what, um, I grew up with and, uh, yeah, I'm still back there all the time. So. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I don't know if a lot of people know, but I told Brian that Drex and I had met a while ago and that was, I don't, I don't even know how long ago that was. That was a long time ago. It was like, it had to be more than like five years ago. I remember we met was, like, yeah. It's definitely so I, more than five years ago. Yeah. Because then I was throwing parties in San Francisco. Yeah. Yep. And mm-hmm. I haven't done that in like forever. So. <laughs> yep. And we could definitely dive into that too, if you want to. But, you know, sure. Drex used to be in the nightlife industry and I would always see Drex. He was just like a straight hustler. That was like the first impression that I had of you when I had first met you. You were just like a straight up entrepreneur. You knew exactly what you wanted to do and you were just working so hard. And you were telling me a lot about Stockton. And even though I was born and raised in the Bay Area, I had never really gone out there too much, you know, and, you know, I knew of Stockton, but I didn't know what was out there, but you always kind of like hyped it up. You said, you know, you had a lot of businesses out there, you were doing a lot out there. And it's really interesting hearing your perspective of like how you grew up and, you know, the communities that you grew up in and and why you hustled so hard. So I want to know like where you kind of got this entrepreneurial mindset and personality and like what made you kind of go out there and do so many things for, for your business and be so entrepreneurial. I'm i uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Cause you know, I feel like I'm Stockton's number one hype man. 
right? <laughs> I'm like Stockton's <laughs> ambassador, right? Everywhere oh, I go, yeah. I'm always talking about Stockton, Stockton, For Stockton, sure. you know, because we are such a such a underrepresented city, you know, that I was that I'm always like, you gotta hear about this, you gotta know about this. This is, you know, what it's like, and you know, I think this is how we're gonna come up, you know, and um, yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised that you were saying, oh, you thought I was, you know, hustler straight businessman. That's great. As long as you didn't think I was drunk. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, because I, I love having a good time every time I meet people. I'm always wanting, wanting to show people a good time, you know, always uh, have a good time with drinks and whatnot, getting people in, just all about having a good time. Uh, and I, I believe that in business or in, 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 I connect business with life very closely where like you have to have a good life you know and you have to, to run a good business you gotta inject all your values of your life into your business right so i just like having a good time so when i do business i love having a good time so uh with that being said you know at the time i was doing a lot of parties i was doing about three parties a week right and you know throwing a party isn't easy when you're trying to pack the place you know what i mean and it's hard when you're the only one doing it you know what I mean? So when I say it's my party, I didn't have any promoters under me. <laughs> so, you know, I had three parties a week and then we I did it for about almost 10 years. That's a very long time <laughs> consecutively every single week. Right. Um, and I probably only had about, you know, out of three parties a week, you know, uh, I don't know how many weeks during a year, like 52, 150 parties a year. You know, uh, that's a lot. That's like <laughs> crazy. And these are club parties, but, right? These yeah, are, yeah, yeah. These okay. are my club parties. And then, I'll, you know, I do concerts and stuff like that. You know, these networking events, etc. cetera. Um, on top of having my, of course, my restaurant, my gym, my cafe, uh, you know, and on top of my, my, my main, main business, which is my film business, right, where <laughs> I would do about 20 videos a week, you know, for clients, right? Um, so they range from like everything, right? Nike, Adidas, Tennessee, all this stuff like that, you know, uh, just creating the, uh, the videos for them. Uh, mostly social media based and yeah, just trying to figure out how to balance all that. And um, the question you asked was, how did I get the entrepreneurial students, uh, spirit to do it? And I guess back to the point of how I connect having a great life with having a great business is I just love having fun with it, right? So making videos is like my main thing. I, I just love making videos, right? It's like my as an artist, as a, as a visionary, right? That's what we see. We see something, we want to make it, we shoot it, we edit it, we create it. And, uh, you know, when I worked with businesses and stuff like that, how do I bring their vision to life, you know? And how do I connect my vision with that one? So one of the main things was what I felt like was the businesses didn't hire me because they thought that, um, that, that I was a good video guy. I think they hired me for the, the vision and the story I'm able to tell with it. Right. So I think that's uh, one of the main things that um, as a as a filmmaker, that that's what they brought me on for. And um, in terms of restaurant, I love, uh, you know, eating healthy food, cooking. Uh, I love doing all that. And then I also wanted a spot to where how I could invest in my hometown of my, my city of Stockton. So that's where I built my first restaurant. And uh, I didn't know what I was doing. Obviously, I never opened a restaurant before. So I kind of went and it took me a, a long time. But, you know, I did a lot of things myself. YouTube, a lot of it. How do I how do I put up walls? How do I put in flooring? You know what I mean? Um, I hired a few contractors here and there to help me out. Of course, um, you know, it, it took a very long time to get that first one going. But then, you know, after I got that going, I wanted a place to where I could bring uh, local artists like myself to come in, uh, connect, network, and then, you um, basically have a um a help a, a guidance to help blow them up right um artists whether it be from you know painting um uh, music to all that in one spot which was super fish pokey and tea my first restaurant in stockton and then i got really into i mean i've always been to fitness but then um after i started working with a lot of fitness businesses uh companies and helping them expand and grow the whole revolution of like hit fitness i decided to open my own and then uh found a partner and then opened that up and then right away opened up another cafe <laughs> like literally like six months after that um but yeah I, I, all that and then of course going back to uh, the other business of nightclubs is that I love having fun and I love taking care of the people that um you know 
that love to have a good time. So, you know, the way I say it is that I used to be the guy at the back of the line that couldn't get in. <laughs> you know, when I first turned 21, I'm like, oh man, this sucks. So, you know, friends couldn't get in. So, you know, so I'm like, okay, how do I get myself to the point where, you know, I can still have a great time. I also get my friends in, get myself in. And yeah, you know, became a party thrower. <laughs> but I already had the most epic college parties. So might as well do at the club. Brought up DJs that, you know, uh, that gave DJ new DJs a shot, gave them a chance, and then now they're big. You know what I mean? Uh, so just really curating, to helping them curate their careers. And uh, also just having a, a great place for me and my friends to hang out or my clients to hang out, whatever, you know, uh, just having a great time. At the end of the day, everything's all about having a great time, right? At the, at the fitness studio, I was a coach, you know, at the restaurant, I was in the back creating the recipes and, and chefing it up. You know what I mean? Uh, so at the clubs, I was pouring the bottles. <laughs> and during the day, you know, I'm, you know, directing films, editing. So, yeah. What what can't you do, Drex? I mean, it sounds like, it sounds I like you're doing everything, dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah, I mean, I just, like, you know, like, 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 like you said, right? The um, Just having a great time doing it. If, you know, I saw something, I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it out, you know, and I go ahead and do it. And, you know, of course, these things aren't cheap, right? So if you're going to do it, you got to be fully invested. You know what I mean? You got to go all the way. So the way I thought of it is like, you know what? Money comes and goes. So I might have lost money I, 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 and I failed a lot. I tried to do a bunch of different businesses. They all failed. Uh, but it's fine, you know, because you only truly fail if you don't learn anything from it. You know what I mean? Uh, you, right. It's a win no matter what if you learn something from it and you're able to grow from that. So I failed a lot. And it's not every, every, not everything I did was a success right away. You know what I mean? So, you know, um, and a, a, as I was telling you, um, you know, I, I was living in a trailer home like 10 years ago. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like renting a room from a trailer home. So, you know, it's almost nothing in the bank. So all the businesses that I opened up, I had to front with all cash. You know what I mean? Because you can't get a loan as a first time business owner, you know? So basically I worked and worked my ass off and then got used up everything I had and put it into a business. And then whether it failed or not, whatever, at least <laughs> I tried. Right. So. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I just want to say like, Oh, and for the record, I never thought you were like some like just random drunk when I had first met you. Like you can tell from between someone who's just like trying to have fun on the weekends and, you know, partying every weekend versus someone who's actually like seeing it from a business aspect and I could always always see that you were seeing it from a business aspect because you know you were creating your own name in Stockton right that was one thing and then when you moved to San Jose like any time that I had connected with someone in San Jose they'd be like oh have you heard of Drex like he's a really great connection you know and so everyone knew of you and you were really like building this this legacy of this empire for yourself and I love how you mentioned that like you make sure that you're having fun doing what you love. Like if you love the nightlife, you love, you know, having fun, you love, you know, being creative, being in the film industry, that's what you wanted to do. And then you love food, you went into restaurants, even though you didn't have experience in there. Um, fitness, like you just went straight into the gym, creating, opening up a gym, like that is just amazing. He has no and fear. No fear at all, yeah. <laughs> the only thing to fear is the fear itself. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, just building so many businesses, obviously you mentioned you failed a lot of times, right? And I think a lot of us don't see those failures because especially as Asians, like there's this whole like saving face thing. We never want to talk about our failures, but a lot of us don't see, you know, all of the things that didn't become successful. So what was like the most challenging thing for you, creating all of those businesses, starting them up from the, from ground zero? And what was going through your mind at the time for businesses that didn't become successful? How do you balance everything? I, I feel like you're so good at a section off your time because every time I see you post TikTok, it's like in the a.m., right? Like 5 a.m., 6 a.m. I'm like, damn, like, that's crazy. Like, what is even edit or even film this and even record it? Because to, in my mind, it's like, I understand you're so damn busy, but how do you section off your day to fit everything that you do? It's it's a lot of, a lot of things that you do actually. I um hey, that that's a really good question. Um, so, you know, 
when I was uh, in college, when I first got into college, I took three classes at San Jose State, and then I thought I was overwhelmed. I was like, fuck, this is too much work. Ah, oh, man, I don't have time for anything. And then it was only three classes, right? <laughs> at the time, I, I didn't understand. So it wasn't until um, I got into my fraternity that one of my um, teachers taught me that, you know what? If you just cut out all the stuff in your life that doesn't push you further, um, then you would have a lot of time for a lot of things. So cut out the TVs, cut out the just hanging out on your phone um, or just texting, scrolling through stuff, cut out all that stuff. Then you will realize you have a lot of time. So I tried it. The next semester I took eight classes, took on a part-time and uh, got very involved in my uh, fraternity. And through all that, I was able to handle it. I'm like, wow, this really works. So I kept that mentality for, well, all up until now, right? And, you know, sometimes you're feeling like, man, I'm tired. I don't want to do anything. Well, you can't think like that. You got to just be like, all right, well, let's go. So, you know what I mean? Like, you, you say, hey, Drex, you post like at 6 a.m. in the morning. What the fuck? Like, and then you're like, Drex, you, fuck, you, you were just talking to me like at 3 a.m. last night. You know, <laughs> like, you know, why? How do you do that? Well, just wake up and be like, well, time to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the, the, last, the, the more time I spend not doing anything is the more time that you waste, right? And you can always make money. But the one thing you can never get back is time, right? You can never get back yesterday. You can never get back this morning. You know what I mean? So maximize all the little time you have. And this sounds kind of crazy, but I have this thing where like the older you get, the time, the faster the time goes, right? Like when we were like in fifth grade, one year took forever, right? One day took forever. You know what I mean? That's why you see kids just like swinging their feet around and like fucking they're hella bored because time is going by so slow for them. While for us, every hour is like, where did that hour go? You know what I mean? So, you know, when we're like 50 years old, one year is only one fiftieth of our lifespan. You know what I mean? So it's going to go by so fast. So how do we maximize our time to where we never waste it? To where we never look back and we're like, man, I wish I had the time for that, but you did, but you didn't use it. So that's the way I kind of think of it. And, you know, um, and of course, you know, it, it's hard to sustain the order you get, the more you move, you know what I mean? Like it's harder to get up. It's harder to, you know, uh, do more physical stuff. Um, and it's more brain power is tough. Right. So the important thing is to keep yourself healthy, right? Take, you know, I, I take a lot of vitamins, you know what I mean? I exercise daily, you know, these are things that keep me going, right? So you ask like, hey, how many, how many hours you get asleep, right? To be honest, I have no idea. <laughs> Sometimes if I need a knockout, I'm just, all right, time to go then, let's go, you know? So um, yeah, it's just always about maximizing your time and don't waste any of it. Even if you're just sitting around, just like staring at the wall, you're like, no, nah, don't do that. Get moving, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do something. You know what I mean? Push. Keep pushing yourself every second that you're alive because the last thing you want is a wasted life or a waste of time in your life. Whatever works. But yeah. Spoken like a true hustler, man. I can I can put it in better words. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you're doing so much already. It's very very impressive just hearing everything you say in your mentality. I can see why you've been so successful at everything that you've done so far we can't wait to see what you're going to achieve next and i i know we talked earlier in the, on the phone or be, like a couple of weeks before but you didn't want to talk about your social media side really but i really i really really want to give you credit for that too because we watched your growth on tiktok go to 4.5 million at the time of this recording i'm pretty sure by the time this comes out it's like 5.5 million i just don't doubt my mind you know in, in the next couple of weeks or so um yeah, man, just, just watching your growth has been tremendous. How have you been leveraging your new found ultra influence to, to make your city better, to help the people around you, to uplift the community? Because I realized that with you is like, you're not selfish as a person at your core, right? You always like to involve people. 
And for your listeners, like Drex gave us tickets to various concerts because, you know, he gets sponsored by them. And we found it very generous of you to do that, not just for us, but their other friends. But you also notice the fact that you, you don't hoard the info to yourself. You always spread it to other people, other businesses, other cities to help the community. Can you, can you talk a little bit about that, about how you've been leveraging that influence to, to make essentially the world a better place? Sure, sure, sure. Um, I mean, you know, to be honest, like my social media stuff is, uh, especially regarding like TikTok, you know, is just really showing how to uh, do things without, um, you know, you don't, you don't need crazy, as, as a filmmaker, that you don't need crazy equipment to achieve epic results, right? Cinematic results, right? And, you know, I show by doing it with my cell phone. But um, in regards to how am I using that influence to uh, um, enhance the the world I believe in <laughs> is um, that, that, to be honest, that's, that's up for grabs, you know what I mean? Uh, I am working on a few projects that uh, especially uh, I'm working with a really, I'm working on a really huge project that I'm not quite sure I'm allowed to talk about yet, but I did mention that it is going to be my Hollywood directorial debut, um, you know, and that's going to have a major impact on um, mental health and um, mental health and uh, minority, uh, minority impact on how to, you know, address certain issues in, um, in the minority community. And um, what I mean by um, Hollywood directorial debut is that is being backed by big Hollywood producers and is also starring uh, major Hollywood uh, stars, actors. So, um, you know, and I was very fortunate to be uh, tapped to direct this project, you know, um, and I think it's going to be a, a huge bridge between uh, a lot of minority cultures and the issues that affect us because in a lot of minority cultures, um, we, there, there are certain issues that are majorly, um, underrepresent, underrepresented, such as, you know, mental health and all that stuff like that, because, uh, as we see, especially in Asian culture, we do not like to show, um, that there might be something wrong with us. You know what I mean? And especially when it comes to mental health, like if we look at pop culture, the only people that really seek mental health, mental health help is, uh, Caucasians, you know what I mean? Asian Americans, you know, uh, Latinos, you know, African Americans, uh, any other minorities, we ha they have such a hard time like going to seek mental help. You know what I mean? So I think, with this being said, you know what I mean. It's um, that's the project I'm working on right now, and that's you know, I'm I'm we're gonna start production soon, and it probably be released by the end of the year. Holy smokes! Congratulations, man. We're looking definitely looking forward yeah. to that. And it does so much for the community already. So. And you keep, you, I don't I know, I feel like I keep pr pressuring you to tell us more, but uh, we don't want to do that, right? We want to wait for the surprise. We want to uh, violate any kind of contracts oh. right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of issues that I'm going to start, you know, uh, there's a lot of stories I want to tell about, you know, uh, certain communities, such as like the homeless crisis, right? Yeah. Like Stockton, we, you know, our, our, uh, our homelessness, like, went up like 10 times in the past, like five years, you know what I mean? And like, um, you know, I hired homeless people. I've seen people descend from like college educated to homeless to, you know, mentally not being able to hold a job anymore. It's you know what I mean? Cycle. I've seen all that person. Yeah. Personal people to me, you know, people I see in the street, you know what I mean? Because we have a lot of misconceptions about homeless people and, you know, how, wh why they are in the, in the situation they're in, you know what I mean? And, you know, how to get out. Right. And one of the main things that affected me in this because you know not only do i live in downtown san jose where I'm pretty much surrounded by them <laughs> but also you know in the city of stockton i helped this uh guy named kevin lincoln become mayor in 2020 and uh his dad was homeless and you know was able to recover and everything like that and then um like i said stockton has a huge you know if you drive down stockton it just looks like a, a war-torn country like that's how it looks like in, in certain parts because of the homelessness, right? Because of makeshift shelters, right? That's, that's, that's why it looks like that, right? So um, I think situations like that, you know, those are the stories I kind of want to tell and, you know, um, be able to put in a, in, in a really dramatic uh, story where like you're not watching a documentary, you know what I mean? You're watching a movie that relates to that, 
you know what I mean? And we be able to kind of let you see a different perspective of how, um, you know, these certain situations are due to lens of a um, storyteller, filmmaker. So. Yeah, that's super powerful. And I completely understand what you're saying because I grew up in San Francisco. So San Francisco is like one of the, you know, worst cities that has a really, really big homeless problem. And there's a lot of homeless people that have become entrepreneurs, right? And they just need to kind of like get out of the situation that they're in. But because of the systems that we have in place right now, they're just, you know, stuck in those situations for the most part. And I love that you're kind of like giving them opportunities and you're talking about this, this whole mental health homeless situation, because especially in the Asian community, there's such a big stigma about it. And if we don't talk about it, you know, it's always just going to be kept under, under the rug and, um, there's really no, not going to be any changes to it. So I love that you're kind of like using your influence to bring up these causes and raising awareness and building more representation for minorities as well. So just lots of props to you, Drex. Thank you. And, you know, that's why I work with a lot of political leaders. And then, you know, because they're the ones that make the laws. Right. <laughs> and, you know, they're the ones that's going to really affect change. So I feel like as much as we want to go out there and do stuff like is nothing's really going to change unless we get our elected leaders to really put the laws in place to kind of, you know, or give us like the resources to help them. You know what I mean? Because, you know, as individuals, we can only do so much. Right. But, you know, with a whole city behind us, we could do so much more. Definitely, man. I really appreciate you doing that for the community and really shining upon a lot of issues that are very hard to talk about. And a lot of influencers are not doing that. So I'm really glad that you are standing out regarding that side but right now i want to change the subject subject a bit and talk about something not so asian so sure Rex, i want you to flex tell us about how your life has changed over the last year or so because we see you take pictures of all these alien celebrities go to all these cool events and we want you to flex as hard as you can for the next 10 minutes because you want to hear all about your journey so in the last year or so <laughs> The pandemic really shut down all my businesses because all my businesses were social based and because of the situation that we're in, like such as the economic situation, as well as like COVID and all that stuff like that. Uh, I, I had to put all my energy away from that because no matter how hard I try to save it, it just couldn't be saved. Right. Um, and so I had to put my energies in other places where um, I had to sh do things with as little resources as possible, being crafty, which was what I always done. Right. I never really raised money for any, any of my projects. So, you know, it's always just been me, you know, how do I lose everything and come back from it? Right. And I guess that's been the story of my life. Right. I keep losing everything and then keep trying to coming back up and try to see how I'm doing, how to make it better. Right. And which has been a success. Like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't matter how you, you know, you don't really truly fail unless you don't learn anything. Right. So I try to learn everything after every single, um, a failure that I have or every single project, um, and I contribute um, a lot of what has happened in the past year to um, just being able to grind it out, right? I challenge myself to, can I make a dope video every single day, right? And that's what I did. We're about, we're almost two years into the pandemic, right? And aside from opening a business on top of that, Tiger Milk Boba during the pandemic, you know, how do I keep doing it, right? More faster, more efficiently, more better, more better ideas, right? So um, I've always been making videos, but the difference now is that I'm in front of the camera. So I'm a personality in front of the camera, right? So that's the difference now, right? You can love my videos all, all, all you want, but then, you know, there's just going to be another video unless there's a personality in it that you really like to follow, which is me because I put myself in front of it, right? So with that being said, you know, now, you know, people see me and they're like, oh, wow. I love the way you you make these videos, right? I love the way, you know, I have people coming up to me all the time and are like, yo, and they always do the, you know, they always grab the phone. And they're like, oh, dude, you're the, <laughs> and then, I'm like, yeah, they're like, oh man, I love it. So, you know, it's dope seeing that, right? Versus before, I didn't know what I did behind the camera. I can make a dope video and they're like, oh, okay, that's cool. Versus now they'd be like, whoa, that's how they did it. You know what I mean? So, you know, it really showed, um, the people, the, my, my contacts and everything like that, you know, not, but not just that further reaching outside of just the, um, you know, the celebrity circle and the client circle to more into like the, um, you know, 
people, regular people, right? The people that just watch, right? They're more, they're more like, okay, wow, Drex, I, I love what you do, right? Versus before, it was always like my, my, you know, people that were potential clients are like, Drex, man, I love what you do, right? But now it's like everybody. So you know, just putting the face to um, the product, I guess, is kind of like uh, how you know it kind of grew. So I guess. Um, yeah, that, that's that's kind of what what happened. Just putting just putting the face to the product and just being a personality in front of it. I love that. I mean, yeah, I definitely can see because like compared to your your videos before, you were rarely in them. I I probably saw you in like a few from your when you were in like the nightlife industry, but you mm -hmm. also had to promote your business through there too, right? But compared to before, you weren't in a lot of you weren't in a lot of videos before, but now mm -hmm. it's like the personality piece. Now that people can see that you're using just like a regular phone camera and like that they can do the same thing that you can and you're showing them exactly how to do it. Like it's not impossible. Like anyone can do this and yeah. you're kind of showing them like a step by step. I think that's what makes people so like all inspired and they're like, whoa, did you see like the video that Drex put out? Like, you know, let's try to do that too. Right. And so I heard, I heard that you can edit videos really, really quickly, like un ungodly <laughs> oh, fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, mean, I mean, I think that's like the um, um, important thing, right? Where people want to be inspired, right? You can make the right. dopest video all you want, right? But they'll just be like, oh, that's cool. And then, right? But how do you get them to be inspired, right? And, and that's what I've always been doing, right? I, how do I inspire other business, uh, you know, people? How do I inspire, you know, you to do this or you to do that? You know what I mean? So um, inspiration has always been my biggest thing. And then, you know, I guess me being in front of the camera showing how I do it will be considered a lot of people's secret sauce, right? Which you don't really want to show, you know what I mean? Because that's your secret. That's your, that's what makes you, you, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, but I think more importantly is that you want to show, you want to inspire other people to do the same. Right. So I'm not necessarily giving away my secret. Well, I guess that is a secret, but I mean, like, you know, is, is, is really like, um, how do I get them? I mean, it, I didn't, I had no idea how much, how many people I would inspire. You know what I mean? Because if you hashtag my name, Drexley, you will see people all around the world, thousands of posts of people doing the same thing I'm doing. You know, if you look at the, each video I put out, like, cause I put out a video every single day and then you get hundreds of comments, you know, thousands of shares, you know what I mean? And like people tagging me, my DMS get like about two, three, 500 messages a day. I can't keep up, you know, but a lot of people ask, hey, Drex, are you really the one responding back to every single comment? Because you respond back to every single comment. And I'm like, yeah, that's actually me. You know what I mean? Because I look at it like this, right? Like if I was messaging, you know, The Rock, right? And then he and then he commented back. I'm like, oh, shit, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that's the way I look at it where, like, you know what? I do read my comments. You know what I mean? I don't really read the DMs, though, because, you know, it's too much, you know. But I read every single comment. So, you know. And I see all the people I inspire and, you know, when they hashtag me or when they tag me or I even see other creators, you know what I mean? Doing that epic one shot, you know what I mean? Even if I don't get credited, it's okay. You know what I mean? Like I still, you know, I, I'm like, damn, that's tight. You know what I mean? Like that, that's super dope, you know? So um, just, I think having a, I think the more important thing is um, creating and popularizing your own thing, right? Because I don't know if you guys remember when I first started doing the epic one shot, 99% uh, of the comments were haters <laughs> talking yeah. so much shit about, you know, oh, a monkey do this. My three year old could do this. This is making me dizzy. I'm going to throw up. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? It was crazy. And then, um, you know, now it's like, you know, anyone, any, any of the big publishers that put it out, you know, only 50% of people say that the other 50% would be the people supporting me. I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. Right. So um, I think uh, popularizing it is, is completely, you know, revolutionary, you know, because they say that they'll never call you a trailblazer until you blaze the trail, right? You're always going to be the one that everyone's going to hate on until you, uh, you know, you make, you, you make it so that they love it. You know what I mean? Until yeah. your, 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 uh, your, your, uh, your followers outgrow the haters. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think, you know, is like that now, you know, where like, you know, I, I still get a lot of haters, but you know, the, uh, the new film that I'm working on is literally going to be in the style of my one shots. So yeah, oh, that's amazing. I mean, no matter what they, you do, uh, 
you're always going to get haters, you know, like, and that oh, kind of shows that's that for sure. you're doing something right. You know, you have to be doing well, something right. I think the more important thing when you have haters is that you have something to show for it. Yeah, exactly. Right? Because yeah. they, they can hate on you and then you don't have nothing to show for it. They're probably right. <laughs> yeah. And like you know Brian I mean? said, it's like you are the type of person who doesn't like keep everything to himself. And I notice, like Brian and I notice that you respond to a lot of the comments. And if they ask any questions about like what phone you're using, what settings you're using, you answer each and every single one of them. So I love that you're so you know open about that. Um what do you think are like some of the things that you learned from your past ventures and experiences that you applied to what you're doing now? Because like you mentioned, you had so many businesses and so many things that you were working on, but obviously some of them had failed, right? And I'm sure you learned a lot throughout that process. And Brian and I, we always say that people who are successful today, it's not because, you know, a lot of the times it's not because they became successful overnight. It's because of all the years that they put in in the past five to 10 years, everything that they learned, everything that they failed on, that they were able to accumulate and apply it to what they're doing today. So what would you say are like the couple of things that you had really learned and had a lesson on in your past experience that you're able to like see all this growth right now? I think one of the main things that um, I learned a lot from is um, <clears throat> being able to not let anything get to you. Right. I used to let things get to me way too easily, be a little hot headed, you know what I mean, back then. And um, every little thing would kind of trip me off or whatnot. And I had to learn how to let go, you know, of, of all that, you know, haters and all that stuff like that. You know what I mean? People that borrow money from you and never return it. You know, you know what I mean? And like, you know, people that just say some, you know, stupid to you. And then, you know what I mean? Uh, being able to let go all of that and just be able to, uh, you know, see if you could open up a better side of them. You know what I mean? And look at all things as much as possible in a positive way, right? Even if they're not going to end up being uh, positive, but at least it'll be a lot better than if you looked at it as a, in a negative way. And um, like you said, well, my business is right. I kind of just went gung-ho, just went boom, just went right in, right? Like, is it going to be successful? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so like, you know, like I said, I got to look at it very optimistically. Right. So even when like, you know, haters, you know, uh, leave, you know, say stupid shit to me, I, you know, I say something back in a very positive way and also learned a lot from that re re replying back to Yelp reviews. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, you know, most of the time they say, you know, most of the time people that write a review, they're probably going to be writing something bad. Because if you think something good, you're not going to write about it. But if you think something pisses you off, you're going to write about it, right? So you have to learn how to write something positive, even though if you lost that customer forever, but because other people are reading it, right? So you want to have that, um, you, you, you want to come off as, um, you know, very, very nice, very uh, understanding. So I think the important thing is understanding, Um and, you know, when, and I still get this, right? People, you know, being in the club too, you know, you, know, you work with a lot of dumb people, you know what I mean? <laughs> that like, you know, piss, you know, they get kicked out the club, whatever, they get too drunk, whatever. They're going to say some stupid stuff to you, right? And then you got to know how to handle that, understand that, oh, they're drunk or they're pissed off or whatever like that. You understand the situation, right? And actually, um, a lot of times that people leave really bad comments on my thing, you know, I would say something nice to them, you know, and then sometimes like ah, about 5% would apologize and be like, yo, sorry, I was having a bad day, right? But at least you got those 5%, you know what I mean? And, you know, that's better than 0%. So I look at it, everything in like, you know, percentages, right? If, you know, I'm going to sell a million dollar, you know, boba cup and like, you know, there's a billion people in the world, all I need is like 0.01% people to buy it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and I, I guess, the more important thing is just looking at how um, these situations are, are you, you make up these situations that haven't happened yet. And then you try to uh, find answers for those, even if those uh, problems don't come up, you find solutions for them. So even if there's a similar problem that comes up to them, you have a solution to kind of help guide you through that problem. So yeah, kind of have like a rough roadmap not definitely a positive, a, a straight one, but at least you have a rough guideline of how you will see these problems or issues. 
Yeah, I mean, that's a really good approach. I think that two negatives just makes the situation, situation worse. But the way that you handle it, especially as a leader, as an owner, shows your, you don't know who's reading your comment, right? It shows, like, oh man, this guy's really level headed. And you create a positive attitude as you walk into your restaurant or business, whatever you do. So, as you know, as we're creating Asian Hostel Network and building it, that is probably the best approach. So, 100% agree with you, Drex. Uh, but I have a question. Uh, I mean, even in the streets, right? Like, yeah, if they say something stupid, you in the streets, you're, you're gonna in person, you're gonna be like, Hey, you know, what I mean, what's wrong? You know, what I mean? <laughs> like, you yeah. know, you're not gonna be like, Hey, screw you, man. You know, like, hey, some people you know, do that. you gotta be, you know, <laughs> really level headed. And under, you have, yeah, some people do that, but you know, if you want to, like I said, you connect business and life together, right? And yeah. how you approach it, you know, Absolutely. so have fun doing it. And yeah, what's your question? Uh, I guess like you're doing so much, and uh, as you mentioned earlier, like you take the time to respond to comments and everything. And you're creating a movie on mental health. How do you take care of your own mental health and find a balance where this is Drex's time and this is where Drex needs to relax? How do you find that balance? I'll be completely honest with you. Um, I, uh, I, I'm not going to lie. I did fall into a little depression when the pandemic hit because when they were like, oh, two weeks closed. All right, that's fine. Oh, four weeks now. Okay. Oh, two months? Uh, <laughs> uh, how are we handling this? So I did kind of go into like a little, little breakdown, but my whole thing was always to be positive no matter what, you know what I mean? And during the pandemic, not gonna lie, that was really, really hard. But I mean, you know, uh, having, you know, bills to pay and not be, you know, I fell into a quarter million dollars in debt because I just opened up these three businesses, brick and mortar businesses. So I had to like, you know, everyone's payroll as well as, you know, all the equipment and all that stuff like that inventory. So I'm like, holy crap, how much was get out of this? Right. I also had a bunch of new, uh, you know, a night market plan, like they're already like, you know, pretty set for that, you know, with 300 vendors and two car shows and a concert, that whole all in one that June. So, um, you know, it, it, I think the most important thing is to uh, stay positive no matter what. And that's always been my approach no matter what just really stay positive in terms of you know just yeah just gotta you know never look at things in a negative way and just always look at things in a super positive way and and that's the only way to do it you know what i mean um and you know th these problems are gonna come across because once you start going negative then um then you know it's gonna be really tough um to to go back from. So mental health, really important to, um, yeah. And, and, and even when I think about it, right, I'm like, how do I keep myself from that? Right. So that, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, just really trying to stay positive in every single way. You know, it's hard. It's definitely hard to be positive as a, a small business owner, as an entrepreneur, especially during the pandemic, you know, obviously a lot of us were struggling, but I, Brian and I can definitely see, you know, you have gone through so much and, you know, with so many businesses, you're still able to see the light at the end of the tunnel just because you are staying positive. And sometimes that's all we need to do, right? If we don't believe in ourselves, then no one else will. And we're the only person mm -hmm. who can really push mm -hmm. ourselves to mm -hmm. continue to stay positive. So I love that you shared that. Um, okay. So Drex, we have one last question for you. And that is, if you could give an advice to an aspiring entrepreneur, what would that one advice be? The best advice I could give a, short, a upcoming entrepreneur is to always look at the bright side, never give up and look at all the people that have done it before you and try to emulate what they're doing, learn from it. And um, yeah, don't look back. Just, just go, just push and just get it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's like when you're reciting that, it's like, it almost sounds like poetry, but that is totally, <laughs> totally what, what Drex would say, but I love it. And thank you so much for that advice. Um, for all of our listeners, we would love for you to share where we can find more about you and all of your businesses online. Yeah. So you can just on all social media platforms, it is Drex Lee. This D R E X L E E at Drexley and um, yeah, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. Um, find me there, and uh, you know I I look forward to uh, collaborating with you guys a lot more. Working with the H N, one of my favorite favorite uh, 
networks because of the founders that have done such an incredible job at curating the content and creating to what it is today. Thank you so much, Drex. It was amazing having you on our show and we're so grateful to be able to learn about your story. Thanks so much.